All right, in this lecture, we're going to be looking at finding the trig values for some additional angles. So far, we've done it for all of our simple angles that lie on the axes, but now we're going to find it for some special families of angles. For example, we're going to look at a group of angles which we're going to call the family of 45 degrees or pi over 4 in its multiples. Um, we're going to find the exact values of the trig functions for pi over 3 and pi over 6, which correspond with the multiples of 30 degrees and 60 degrees. And then we'll also take a look at the calculator and how we can do it find other angles. The, the drawback of the calculator, of course, is it's always going to round off our answers, and we want to get exact answers. So we're going to use some techniques on these to find out what all the exact value of the trig functions happen to be when you're looking at a family of 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 30 degrees. Let's start with the first special family of angles, which is the 45 degree family. Now what I mean by, of course, a 45 degree angle is it is half of the right angle, the right angle being that quarter of a full rotation. So 45 degrees is this diagonal line that intersects the first quadrant. Now, we want to try to find the coordinates of this point because if you recall, to find the trig function values, we actually have to know what the coordinates of this point happen to be. Recall that this is a unit circle, so we know that the radius of this circle is 1. So this point right here is going to be 1, 0. Now because it is a unit circle, it satisfies this equation right here, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, because 1 squared is 1. Um, so this is the equation for that circle, which means that this point being on the circle has to satisfy it. Now because it's a 45 degree angle, notice that for every distance you go over, you go up the same distance. It is, in fact, the line y is equal to x, meaning that every coordinate on this blue ray right here has x is equal to y. So if you use that information, namely that y is equal to x, you could just replace that y right there with an x, and you have x squared plus x squared has to equal 1 for this point. That is a point on this 45-degree um, terminal side. That actually adds together to give you 2x squared is equal to 1. And we can solve this equation for x by just dividing the 2 to the other side. x squared would be equal to 1 half. And if you take the square root of both sides, that tells us that x is equal to 1 over the square root of 2, or by rationalizing the denominator, you have that that is the square root of 2 over 2. Now you'll notice I left off the plus or minus, which is an algebraic rule you need to use whenever you take the square root of both sides, but because I'm looking for the positive solution, I'm going to only include um, positive square root of 2 over 2. Notice there is a negative solution that corresponds with what happens if I extend this line out in this direction. We weren't looking for that point right there. We're looking for the point that's got a positive x coordinate. Now, if x is equal to square root of 2 over 2 and y is equal to x, then that means y is also equal to that, which makes the coordinates of that point square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2 we now have the coordinates for that point, which is sufficient for us to now find the trig function values. Now we can use the same reasoning as above to identify the coordinates for other angles that are similar to the 45 degree angles. Now what I mean by similar is that you know that pi over 4 is the 45 degree angle. If you have a 45 degree angle with the negative x-axis as well, you're going to have the angle 3 pi over 4 or 135 degrees. That's what this pi over 3 pi over 4 right here is, 135 degrees degrees. Additionally, this 5 pi over 4 is going to have a similar set of coordinates because you're going pi over 4 past the negative x axis and that corresponds with 225 degrees and then if you keep going this angle over here right which makes a 45 degree angle only in the negative direction with the positive x axis or if you go all the way around that 7 pi over 4 is 315 degrees. We've already found that the coordinates of this point are square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, which means that the x value the x value of that point is square root of 2 over 2, and the y value of that point is square root of 2 over 2, which means that the y value of this point over here 
is square root of 2 over 2. What do you suppose the negative x value is since we're going to the left? Well, this makes the same triangle, that is the same, if you, if you drop this line straight down, as this side over here does, which means you'd expect this side to be exactly the same size, and in fact it is. That's part of where the solution from above, where you get a negative answer, would have come from. Uh, we, we only looked for the positive answer for that point, but in a negative case you might get a negative square root of 2 over 2 because the same distance corresponds to that length of that side here. So that is negative square root of 2 over 2 in terms of where that is, which then tells us that this has an x-coordinate, that is this point here, of negative square root of 2 over 2, and by the same reasoning that's going to be negative square root of 2 over 2 downward, which makes this negative square root of 2 over 2. And over here, we can have the x value is square root of 2 over 2, and the y value is negative square root of 2 over 2. So these four point values let us find the trick function value for any member of the 45 degree family of angles. Now let's actually calculate some of these trig function values. Um, just to refresh our memory, you have a unit circle here, poorly drawn, my apologies, but we'll get the gist. A 45 degree angle and the coordinates of this point on the 45 degree terminal side were Oh, where'd my pen go? Let's try that again. Uh, square root of 2 over 2, comma square root of 2 divided by 2. So um, we need to recall what our trig function values are. So we'll come over here and let's do that in this side here. Remember that sine of theta was the y coordinate on the unit circle where the terminal side intersected that unit circle. Cosine of theta is x tangent of theta was defined as the ratio y over x. Uh, cosecant was 1 over y. Secant theta was 1 over x. And cotangent of theta was x over y. Alright, so using that together with this of course being my x coordinate and this over here being my y coordinate, I can easily now find those six. Sine theta square root of 2 over 2. Cosine theta square root of 2 over 2. And tangent of theta, I'll go ahead and write it out this time, square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2. The reason I say that, I'll write that out, is because you can easily see you're dividing one thing by itself, you get just 1. So the tangent of 45 degrees is 1. Um, cosecant of theta is 1 over the square root of 2 over 2, which is you just invert and multiply to divide by a fraction, so you have 2 divided by square root of 2 times that 1 up there, right? So invert the bottom. Um, 2 divided by the square root of 2 is actually the square root of 2. You can see that by either rationalizing the denominator or just recognize the fact that square root of 2 is what I'd have to multiply square root of 2 by to get to 2. So cosecant of theta gives me square root of 2. Now secant of theta is going to look exactly the same, 1 over the square root of 2 over 2, which we just saw is the square root of 2. And then cotangent of theta is going to be x over y, which again is the same thing over itself, which gives me just 1. So those are the values of each of the six trig function uh, for theta equals 45 degrees. Okay, now let's look at just a few more. And we're not doing all six trig function values for these, but just one by one. So let's think about where is um, 130, 135 degrees. We can find the exact value of that trig function by simply finding where it is and recognizing that it is in the family of 45 degrees. Now how do I know it's in the family of 45 degrees? Because it makes a 45 degree angle with either the x or y axis once you draw it. 135 degrees, remember straight up is 90, Straight left is 180, so halfway between there is 135 degrees. And we already saw that the coordinates of that point right there were the negative square root of 2 over 2, because you went left, and then positive square root of 2 over 2, because you're going up.
So sine is the y value. So sine of 135 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. What about cosine of 5 pi over 4? Let's think about where 5 pi over 4 is. Now you can either convert that degrees or just think through what pi over 4. Remember pi over 4 is 45 degrees, so take 5 of those. There's 45 degrees, 2 of those would be 90 degrees, 3 is 135, 4 is 180, 135 degrees would be down here. So this angle right here is 135 degrees. Sorry, not 135, is 5 pi over 4, which actually turns out to be 225 degrees, but that's the 5 pi over 4 that we're looking for. So what are the coordinates of that point right there? Well, by our reasoning, we've already done on the previous page, that is negative square root of 2 over 2 and negative square root of 2 over 2. So the cosine is the x value, so cosine of 5 pi over 4 is equal to negative square root of 2 over 2. All right, last one, tangent of 315 degrees. Um, we can recognize that as being almost 360. In fact, it's 45 degrees short of 360, which makes this in here the 45 degrees, so we know it's in that family. There's your 315 degrees right there. Now the coordinates of that point, since we're going right first, that's positive square root of 2 over 2, and we're going down, so that's negative square root of 2 over 2. So tangent is the ratio of those. We'll get tangent of 315 is negative square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2. They cancel and leave behind a negative 1. There you go. Okay, for our next, ba next batch of angles, we're going to take a look at the 30 degree family and the 60 degree family, or in radians, pi over 6, which is equivalent to 30, um, or pi over 3, which is equivalent to the 60 degrees. So what we want to do is basically the same thing we did before, in that looking down here below at our unit circle, we're trying to find the coordinates of these points here, namely the um, intersection of the unit circle with the 60 degree terminal side and with the 30 degree terminal side. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the relevant triangle. Notice that if I drop this line straight down to the x-axis, I create a 30, 60, 90 triangle. It's 90 degrees here because I'm dropping straight down, making a right angle with the x-axis. So that's this right angle here, 60 degrees, because that's what I'm looking at. And of course, we know that the interior angles of a triangle have to sum to 180. So 90 plus 60 is 150 leaving 30 to be the last um, angle. Now, what we want to know is what's the x value, which basically is a here, and what's the y value of that point. So the trick to figuring that out is to, well, basically reflect the triangle about this side, that is the b side. Just flip that over there, and you end up with this picture right here. So you create a mirror image of this triangle on the other side of your line B. And in doing so, notice what you've created is an equiangular triangle. And what I mean by equiangular is that all three angles, this angle here, this angle here, and this angle here are the same. They're equal. Okay, 60, 60, 60. And the thing that's interesting about an equiangular triangle is it's also equilateral. All equiangular triangles are equilateral, meaning that all three sides have to be the same length. So if this side here is 1, and it's 1 because it's on the unit circle, then this side over here has to also be 1. Which also means that the bottom side all the way across has to be 1. And notice, if this length here was A, that means you have an A here. You have a mirror image of that A, so 2A has to equal a length of 1 because it's equilateral. Or in other words, a is 1 half. Just divide the 2 across. So this side over here is 1 half. So now we know two sides of the 30, 60, 90 triangle just by virtue of the fact that it's 30, 60, 90 and the hypotenuse, that is this longest side, was length 1. Now if you know two sides of a right triangle, you can find the third by simply using the Pythagorean Theorem. In our case, we know one side is one-half. We want to know the other side, and we know the hypotenuse. 
So we have 1 half squared plus b squared is equal to 1, or 1 fourth plus b squared is equal to 1. If you move the 1 fourth to the other side, you have b squared is 3 fourths, because 1 minus a fourth is 3 fourths. Take the square root of both sides. b is uh, square root of 3 on top, and the square root of 4 is just 2, so you get b is square root of 3 over 2, which means the coordinates of this point have to be square root of 3 over 2, uh, sorry, uh, 1 half, and because that's the x coordinate, and the y coordinate is square root of 3 over 2. Now actually we've already done enough work to figure out the second one as well because if you look at it, if you drop this side down here, you've still got a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Why is it 30, 60, 90? Well you've got 90 here and 30 here, which means this side up here has to be, in order for the sides to all, or the, sorry, the angles to all add up to 180, this has to be a 60. And what we just learned is if we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle and the hypotenuse is 1, then the short side, okay, which is opposite the 30 degrees, that's the shortest side, has to be 1 half of that. And that's going to be true no matter which orientation your triangle has. And then the long side, is square root of 3 over 2. So that makes the coordinates of this point, the x value is now square root of 3 over 2, and the y value is 1 half. Okay? Now what you don't have to remember every single time is this process of finding it. I wanted to show you that so you knew where these dimensions came from. But a 30, 60, 90 triangle always has this property right here, or the property that I've described in here. That is, if you have a hypotenuse of 1, and this is a 60 degree angle, and this is 30, and this is 90, the shortest side is, oh, the shortest side is 1 half, and the long side is square root of 3 over 2, which is going to give us all the information we need to find the trig function values later on when we're looking for um, families of these 30 and 60 degree angles. Having these coordinates up here now makes it uh, gives us all the information we need to find the six trig function values of 60 degrees. So sine of 60 degrees, since we're looking at now this uh, angle, is the y coordinate, so it's square root of 3 over 2. Cosine 60 degrees is 1 half. And tangent of 60 degrees is y over x. So sine over cosine or square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half which you can do by inverting and multiplying so you get square root of 3 over 2 times the reciprocal of the denominator 2 over 1 2's cancel so your tangent of 60 degrees is square root of 3 if you want to do now the cosecant of 60 degrees that's 1 over your y coordinate, so 1 over square root of 3 over 2, or 2 over square root of 3, which we rationalize the denominator and get 2 square roots of 3 over 2. Oh, sorry, over 3, my bad. Secant of 60 degrees is 1 over 1 half, which is just 2. And cotangent of 60 degrees is 1 half over square root of 3 over 2, or 1 half times 2 over square root of 3, which gives me 1 over square root of 3, because again I inverted the denominator, multiplied the numerator and denominator, canceled, leaving me multiplying straight across to get 1 over square root of 3, or rationalize the denominator by multiplying by the square root of 3 over square root of 3, you get square root of 3 over 3. And there are your six trig function values. Now you can go through the same process. I'm going to write it down quickly, but you can do the exact same thing with this one. And what you should end up with is um, sine of 30 degrees, since now we're, our coordinates are flipped, is actually one half. Did you see that cosine of 60 was one half? Now sine of 30 is one half. Cosine of 30 turns out to be the x coordinate, which is square root of 3 over 2. And tangent of 30 degrees is now 1 half over square root of 3 over 2, which we happen to have done already over here. I end up with the square root of 3 over 3 when I do that.
cosecant of 30 degrees is 1 over a half, which we found was 2. Secant of 30 degrees was 1 over the square root of 3 over 2, which we found to be 2 square roots of 3 over 3. And cotangent, sorry, cotangent of 30 degrees was square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. That's x over y which we got before when we did square root of 3 over 2 divided by half, worked it out, we got square root of 3. And so there are our six trig function values for 30 degrees. In the same way that we found the rest of the 45 degree family, we can do this, uh, we can find the coordinates of the 60 degree family. Now what I mean by the family is multiples of that um, angle. So 60 degrees here or pi over 3. If we did two of those, 2 pi over 3, right, this was 60 degrees. Two of those, it's going to give us 120 degrees. Of course, three of those we already know how to do, right? That's the point negative 1, 0, so we can do that, no problem. Um, we've already done that one. This one down here is if you keep going, you get four of those pi over 3s or four 60 degrees, you end up with 240 degrees. And then your 5 pi over 3 is 5 of the 60 degree angles. A multiple gives me 300 degrees. So either 5 pi over 3 or 300 degrees, or either 4 pi over 3 or 240, so on. You can find now the coordinates of these by just thinking about that right triangle that's 30, 60, 90 again, right? This we knew had a coordinate of 1 half, because that's the short side, and the long side was square root of 3 over 2. So over here, we're going to go the same distance, meaning the length of this bottom side is still the same because it's still 30, 60, 90, or 60, 30, and then 90 here. So this is still 1 half, but now you're going left, so it has a negative x value, still positive y value. Okay, and that's still 1 half down here, negative, and also now we're going down, so the coordinates of that point will be negative 1 half negative square root of 3 over 2, and the coordinates of this point will be a positive 1 half, but negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay? All right, so now we have, that's negative, that's not r, just so you know. Okay, so these are the important coordinates that we need to know right here. Now what about the 30 degree family? Now the 30 degree family some multiples of those are already covered by our 60 degree family. For example, if you take two of the 30 degrees, you've got a 60 degree, so we already have that one. But there's some that aren't covered. For example, if you have five of these 30 degree angles, we haven't talked about that one yet because one of them is 30, two of them is 60, three of them is 90. We know how to do all of those. Four of them would be 120, which we've already done. Five of them now, that's five pi over six is 150 degrees. That one we don't have the coordinates yet for. Okay? Same thing would be true for seven of them, which is 180, not 180, 210 degrees. That's what this one is. And then this one over here is shy of 360 by just 30 degrees, so that's 330 degrees, or 11 pi over six. So what are the coordinates of these? We know the first one. Right, again, it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle right here. The short side is 1 half, so the y coordinate was 1 half, and the x coordinate was square root of 3 over 2. Over here, we're going to have still a 1 half going up, but negative square root of 3 over 2 for the x coordinate. Down here, that point would be still negative square root of 3 over 2, but now negative 1 half. And this point right here is. Um, we're going positive square root of 3 over 2, but negative 1 half now. Now that gives us a pretty large set of angles that we can now find the trig function values for. All right, now I'm going to keep these up on the screen. I'm going to use my highlighter to find the angles that we're talking about here. But start with 210 degrees. We've already talked about it. We want to find the cosine at 210 is this angle right here. So we know the coordinates that we need for 210 degrees. So the x-coordinate for cosine is negative square root of 3 
over 2. Boom. Okay. Next, let's do sine of negative 60. Now, where is negative 60 going to be? Negative 60 is down 60 degrees, so that's 300 degrees. That is clockwise. There it is. And so this is the point we're looking at right here. And we want the y coordinate because we are doing sine. Y coordinate is negative square root of 3 over 2. So it just so happens we've got the same answer. What about tangent of 5 pi over 3? All right, let's do 5 pi over 3. Where is 5 pi over 3? Um, we just did it, in fact. It's this guy right here. So I'm going to do that in blue. It's the same angle. Now we're going to do the ratio. So you have the y over x, so negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. You invert and multiply, the 2's will end up canceling, you get negative square root of 3 is your value. I kind of shortcutted that, but you can write it out if you need to. And there are our trick function values for those angles. Later on in the course, we are going to learn how to find trig function values for some other angles um, that are usually either combinations of ones we already know or maybe half or a fraction of the ones that we know. But in a lot of cases, we're going to come across angles that are not in, in the family or in any way related to the family, and we need to use some other tool to do it. Now, there's some advanced mathematics that goes into making your calculator work and be able to calculate these things. Remember, there were days before calculators when we still knew how to find trig function values. We either used slide rules or there were tables that had been developed, but now we have the benefit of technology. So you are required for this class. You need access to a scientific calculator. Now, whatever scientific calculator that you're using, what you need to do is read through that manual and make sure that you understand one very important thing, and that is how to check what mode my calculator is in. Because your calculator can think in radians or degrees. And if you are in degree mode and you try to find the trig function of a radian measured angle, you will get the wrong answer. On the other hand, if you are in radian mode and you try to find an angle whose measure is in degrees, you will also get the wrong answer. So you need to be able to first change the mode of your calculator if it's in the wrong mode, and second, be able to recognize whenever a problem is given to you, is it degrees or is it radians? And of course, the easiest way to tell is degrees will always have that little circle, right? And radians won't have anything. Radians also commonly, but not necessarily, have a pi in their value. All right, so cosine of 48 degrees, I go to my calculator, I read my instructions, I learn how to type it in, and generally um, we're going to go about four decimal places. I plug that into my calculator, I get 0 0.6691. Again, make sure your calculator is in degree mode and double check that you can get that answer. Sine, tangent, those are actually pretty easy to use in your calculator. Um, it may be harder to find out how to use cosecant or secant or cotangent in your calculator. Some of your calculators will have that function built in. You may have to go under a um, special catalog of functions to find it. Some calculators actually don't even have a cosecant or a secant or a cotangent button or function that you can find. But fear not. There is a solution. We can still find the cosecant of 21 degrees. All we have to remember is that this cosecant is 1 over, what is it, x or y? It's 1 over y, the y coordinate. Now, why is that helpful? Well, the y coordinate, remember, is the sine of that angle. So guess what I can do? I can find the sine of this angle and then just do 1 divided by that. So the sine of 21, which I plug into my calculator, gives me 0 0.3584. If I do 1 over that in my calculator, I get 2.7904 as my answer. So what you can do is with cosecant of a number, you can do 1 over the sine of that number. If you have a secant, of a number, you can do 1 over the cosine of that number. And if you have a cotangent of a number, you can do, because it's the reciprocal of tangent, you can do 1 over the tangent. And all of our calculators will have the sine, cosine, and tangent. But that's a helpful little tip 
Um, so these are some properties we're going to come back and address. If we haven't already, we're going to talk about them even more later on. Last of all, tangent of pi over 2. By the way, my calculator was in degrees up here. I got to switch it to radians. So in my calculator, I got to go under a special um, key sequence to turn it into radian mode, but I've done that now. And if I type in tangent of pi over 12, now I've got to find the pi button on my calculator, but if I can't find it, you can also use just an approximation of 3.14 for pi. If I plug in 3.14 divided by 12 or pi divided by 12, I get a number. Take the tangent of that number, I get 0 0.26. Seven nine. Okay, and by the way, let me make another point here. In all three cases here, I've put an equal sign when I really probably should put an equal sign with a dot above it. Does anybody know what that means? You think about what's going on here. You realize when I wrote down 0.6691, what did I do? I rounded. This is not the exact answer. This is not the exact answer, and this is not the exact answer. They are approximations of the exact answer because I've rounded. If you do too much rounding off in a lot of calculations, you're going to end up with some error that can cause problems and depending on how accurate you want your answers to be. The benefit of what we did on the previous page is when he had things written in square roots, square root of 3 over 2, square root of 3 over 3, those numbers are exact because we haven't plugged them into a calculator yet. That's why those are preferred in most cases to leave in radical form if you can. When that's not possible, then we resort to using our calculator. In your homework, you should expect to find instructions of how many decimal places to round to so that you know what is expected. The last point we'd like to make in this lecture before moving on is that what we have done so far is to find everything in terms of the coordinates on the unit circle. We can actually generalize the values of the trig functions to points on the um, general circle, still centered at the origin, but having a radius not equal to 1, some other radius besides that. So look at the picture that I've got drawn here, where you have an angle theta. I've got a unit circle drawn on here. We know that if we knew the coordinates of this point right here, we'd be able to find the six trig function values by their definition. Now, what we want to be able to do is, what if we don't know the coordinates of this point, but we happen to know the point's coordinates on some other circle? So the radius now, this distance here, is no longer 1, but some value equal to r. Okay? Can we still find the trig function values if we know the x and y of this point, not this point? Okay, we know the coordinates of this point, and we happen to know the radius. In fact, if we know the coordinates of this point, because the equation for the circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared, we'll be able to find the radius. Again, if we know the coordinates of the point, we can find the radius. Can we still find the six trig function, trig function values? And the answer is yes, we can, because of the similar triangles. All right, let me erase some of what I've drawn on here, just so you can see this again. Look at this triangle right here, boom, 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 okay, in red, and look at this one right here that's in green, okay? Those are what we call similar triangles, which means their sides are in proportion to each other, okay? So, for example, um, well, let's look at this length right here. That length right there and this length right here are in the same proportion to each other as say this length here and this length here. If this had been double, then this would be double. If it's three times, it's three times, but all the lengths are in proportion to each other. Okay, And you can solve that using proportions, but the result of that proportional relationship is that sine of theta is no longer y if y is out here on another circle, it's y over r. Right. For example, if r was 1, notice sine of theta is y, which is the definition. But now if you go on another radius, you can use y over r. Cosine of theta is x over r. Tangent of theta actually turns out to be the same thing. Now, why is it the same thing? Because if you do a ratio of the long side to the short side, you'll get the same thing as the y side to the x side over here. Cosecant is r over y. It's the reciprocal of sine secant is the reciprocal of cosine and cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent just as we saw before 
So again, the purpose of this theorem is just to help us see that we can find the trig function values even if we're not on the unit circle. So here's an example of a, of a problem that we can use this information to solve. We're given the fact that we've got some point on the outside of a circle, and all we know are the coordinates. It's 4, 3. Now, because it's 4, negative 3, we know it's positive and then negative. It's somewhere down um, here. Right? It's in the fourth quadrant because x is positive and y is negative. Now, we don't know the angle at all. In fact, we don't even have to know the angle to find the trig function values. What do we need to know? If we've got an x here and a y here, we need to know r. If we find r, then we can find all the six trig function values. Recall that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, so 4 squared plus a negative 3 squared is equal to r squared, or 16 plus 9 equals r squared, which means 25 is equal to r squared, or r, which is always a positive value, is positive 5. With that knowledge, now we can find the six trig function values. Right, let me come down here and do that. Um, sine of whatever theta happens to be is y over r, so negative 3 from here over 5, negative 3 fifths, we got it. Cosine of theta is x over r, which is going to be 4 fifths. And tangent of theta, which is y over x, is negative 3 fourths. Um, let's do cosecant of theta is equal to uh, negative 5 thirds, or 5 over negative 3. Secant of theta is 5 over 4, and cotangent of theta is 4 over negative 3. And now we know, using this theorem right here. And that's the end of Lecture 8.